guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? We are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording Saturday, September 8th, and we actually have a good amount of stuff to talk about, thanks in part to Jeff Goodman of The Messenger, mm. because without his Tatum interview, we wouldn't have much. But uh, yeah, we have September a ton. is, uh, we do have a ton now, and we'll get into that. September is just dragging on, though. It's September yeah, we 9th. We thought it August like was bad. Be the 30th. September, is... worst. <laughs> September is crazy, man. I mean, I was... Uh, I looked out at the calendar. I'm like, okay, September's got to be at least halfway over now. It's the ninth. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> September's over now, right? Nope. It's uh, not even Dude, close. I cannot <laughs> wait till this month is over. September, there, there's nothing. In like, October, in general, like, be... there's nothing to be, like, really excited for. There's Fuck no off. holidays. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. Fuck off. I actually enjoyed the first, like, I watched Chiefs Lions, but I, and I usually don't watch football, but, like, I, I think it was just because it was the first, like, drop of sports that i had in mean, baseball doesn't count either I'm i sorry. i went out <laughs> and i here. had a bunch of wings finally get one thursdays at buffalo wild wings i there just we go. annihilated <laughs> there we go but i could i anyways, did 30 i probably could have did 40 maybe 45 30 wings is crazy it's easy just, I, I can't do it um but as i mentioned thank you to jeff goodman of the messenger and clns i mean kind of friend of the program yes. if you want to put it in the CLNS family um but he did an interview with Jason Tatum and he talked about everything they they talked about it all and so we're going to break down the Tatum interview bit by bit we'll go through all his quotes we'll talk about all the topics um but in the timestamps you're going to just see Jason Tatum interview and uh you can pick through it all but uh let's just start with this top one here um being a great Celtic and I know you wrote about this for Celtics blog um it ain't up yet but it's Tatum coming. was asked it's not but it's coming Tatum was asked uh, about you know being a Celtic and what it means, he goes. I would love to be on the Mount Rushmore uh, of Celtics. Uh, Bill Russell, Paul Pierce, and those guys—they paved the way. The one thing all those guys have is chips. Um, I have to get to the top of the mountain to be even considered as one of those guys. I want to be an all-time great. I want to be a winner, uh, known as a winner, and I believe I will be. Which is, I know you were very excited to hear that from Tatum. <laughs> well, he's talking about chips. He's on the ruffles back. All right, it's true. Good start. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> No, but this this is really awesome. This is a kind of thing that you really haven't heard from anybody in a while, it feels like. I felt like Marcus Smart was really the guy that wanted to be one of these guys, but he obviously didn't have the skill level. It's nice to see that Tatum is ready to kind of take on that responsibility, especially after the Smart exit, where the Celtics are looking for their new guy. Like, not so much talent-wise, but they're embodiment of what it means to be a Celtic. Now this, could it be a very much a, a pander quote? Sure. <clears throat> Possible. But he has real goals and, and that's the real takeaway. He's been close. They've been close to winning a title, been to the finals. They should have won. Didn't. Uh, he's been to four conference finals in six seasons. Yep. And he's almost there. He has a, maybe the best resume of anybody 25 or younger ever. No, because Bird won like right away. Yeah. So did Bill Russell. But, but in like recent history, he's poised to have a legendary Celtic career. He's off to yeah. the best start since Bird. And he very well could wind up on the team's Mount Rushmore. But I guess if we really want to talk about that, you really have to talk about who's there first. And that, yeah. that's what I wrote about for Celtics blog. It's not up yet, but it'll be there. Mm -hmm. Do we want to talk about it or do we want to wait and tell people to go read your article instead? No, no, we can talk about it. <laughs> All right. Well, obviously he mentioned Bill Russell and Larry Bird, and I feel like those are the two obvious names. Yes. Paul Pierce is another one who right now is very clearly there in my eyes. And I, I think John Havlicek is probably the fourth one right now. And – I don't necessarily know if there's an argument for anybody over those four guys. I, well, there, there's a conversation to, that can be had, but I feel like those four have Just a pretty wait. clear case. <clears throat> yeah, I know. <laughs> Unload the clip. <laughs> I'm pretty like those four are, are a fairly top, like clear top four, at least right now, because, you know, Bird and Russell speak for themselves. Pierce had was here for so many years and he did it in a modern era. And I, I think that's the biggest thing that I wanted to say when we're talking about who would Tatum replace we I know we texted about it and I said, oh, he'd probably play replace Havlicek. And you said, oh, I think he'd replace Pierce. And I think the biggest reason why 
Havlicek could get bumped off instead of Pierce is because of the eras thing. Like you look at it in the scope of Bill Russell had his own era. Larry Bird had his own era. Paul Pierce had his own era of Celtics ball. And so did Jason Tatum. Havlicek did for a small period, but it was like broken in half. Like half of his career was I'm also the second to, to Bill Russell. And then he did do it himself, which is why he's there on the Mount Rushmore now. But I think because of the fact that he shared that half era, he doesn't necessarily not that he's not good enough to be on Mount Rushmore because he clearly is, but he doesn't get thought of as highly as Paul Pierce because of the way they did it and the 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 length of time they were on their own in Boston, if that makes sense. I just feel like mentally that's well, how I think about it. First and foremost, one of the reasons why people don't mention him as quickly as the other three is the time that has passed. That's number one. The two yeah. of us have never seen Havlicek play. Uh, certainly not live. I don't know how many old black and white Zero. games you're watching. None. Have not. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's first and foremost the first reason. But as I went through... I determined, obviously, Bird, Russell, Mortal Locks. They probably are immovable. Like, they are completely there forever. I don't think there's any debate to that. They are the two greatest. Anybody arguing that they're not on there just doesn't understand or is don't know looking ball. to pick a fight. Yeah, they don't know ball. So that that's the first step to this. Now, I personally have Havlicek third, and here's why. Did he come up under Bill Russell? Yes, absolutely he did. But he continued the winning tradition and kept the franchise propelling forward in the 70s. Winning in 74, winning in 76, he won a finals MVP. He played 15 seasons with the Celtics, just as many as Pierce. He is the franchise's all-time leading scorer. Yep. He made a bunch of all-star teams, bunch of all-NBA and he he just kept that winning tradition going. Like that to me is the biggest thing. Yes, he absolutely was. He was a sixth man at one point. He he moved into the starting lineup. But at the end of the day, he became the face of Celtics basketball for a sustained period of time. Regardless, he did have his own era, and they won more championships than Pierce did. But I'll say this about Pierce, and this is one thousand percent why he's on the Mount Rushmore. And I'm sure there are people that are like Pierce isn't even on there, and we'll get to that. Pierce ushered in a whole new era of Celtics fans, including the two of us, really. We grew up, that's who the, the star was. He was the captain for years. He was the face of the big three, despite Garnett probably being the best player in the bunch. He won the finals MVP. They win in 2008. He was drafted here. He stays for 15 years. He has a few more years after leaving the Celtics. The only one on this list who have not spent their whole career with the Celtics. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Especially, he was here plenty of time. Uh, but the and reason I'm leave. mentioning that, <laughs> he no, no, he didn't. Leave. One, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> one, him exiting the Celtics is why Jason Tatum is on the team. <clears throat> this is true. Two, he had one of the best moments ever a as a returning player making the final shot, like like a homecoming moment that ruled his final game in Boston, where he gets subbed in for the last twenty seconds and makes one more three, and the place goes bananas, and the Celtics still win. The perfect going away, away player, coming home moment, team wins, player wins, everybody's happy. Awesome moment. Jersey retired, Hall of Fame, the whole nine. He definitely deserves to be there. And again, he's the reason why Tatum's on this team. So his legacy lives on through Tatum. He's like getting like almost like when you have a, a 401k and you get interest on your investment. <laughs> like he's kind yeah. of getting like supplemental like accolades through Tatum. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. That's guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. It absolutely is. The app is easy to use, and you can be on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash Boston. Kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, go I mean, my fan. Keep <laughs> you're good. My, my biggest thing is, 
and again, I don't want this to turn into a JJ Reddick esque where I get killed. Mm. You go, he's made this many all star teams, he's made this many. Yes, <laughs> but <laughs> he also didn't have to play the same level again. I don't want that to discredit John Havlicek's greatness because he had a phenomenal career. He's the all time leading scorer on the one of the best franchises in the league, one of the top three, our easy argument for the best, the most one of the most historic. <clears throat> but I don't know. It's just I, I think there's something to be said in my at least the, how my brain works of you pick one guy from each era and it's really hard to have another guy from the same era on the Mount Rushmore, even though he did transcend into his own uh, and he won two titles there. It's just, I mean, one guy made the all-star team this year that he made it with 10 points and 10 rebounds. Like I, this, this, I, I'm not, I don't, again, I'm not going to spend the whole time arguing that way. I just think if you were to bump somebody off for Jason Tatum, eventually, if he does climb that mountain, it would be, I mean, I'll just say it'd be pretty tough debate because I don't know. It, it's it's. I'm not going to say Pierce has like a clear argument above Havlicek. That's just the way I see it. <clears throat> and I don't think either one is like very clearly head and shoulders above the other either. I think it's pretty close. Um, no, I think it's fair. But, I, yeah. I just think like all of the accolades and in, in the, the leading scorer part of it, which you'd have to imagine by the time Tatum is done, if he stay, sticks around forever, he'll be the leading scorer of the Celtics. So it'll be a little bit less relevant. I don't know. Comments, let us know who you think. Also, yeah. honorable mentions who are a part of the article, and I truly think deserve a shout. But because I think we're really focusing on players and what Tatum can do as a player to become one of the four best Celtics ever, we've got Red, Red Auerbach, of course. He's literally the patriarch. He was, till death, a member of the organization, the architect of many championship teams, the team's coach of the Russell era steps down. Russell takes over his coach. Then he helps orchestrate plenty of trades to get Mikhail Parrish, drafts Bird at six. All of these things ushers in the new era of success. And again, until that rat Patino rolled around, he was in charge of the team. So mm -hmm. he was Mr. Celtic. Also, honorable mention, it's kind of tough not to have Tommy on the Mount Rushmore because he just ruled. Tommy was the best. <laughs> if you ever need like a pick me up, go in and watch Timmy's like 20 minute mixtape of Tommy just ranting on the broadcast, like all of his highlights being alongside Mike Gorman, who also kind of gets a shout, but Tommy excellent playing career. He never had to be the guy, which is why I leave him off of the list. It's, it's yeah. tough. And I actually kind of hate it because it was like an afterthought. I was like, well, technically Tommy kind of should be on there. And it's because he was on all those title teams. He had big performances throughout the Russell era. He had like a 37 and 15 game seven or something crazy like that as a rookie. He coached to two championships, those Havlicek championships. And then he was a broadcaster with the team until death. He was a Celtic for all of the championships. He is yeah. Mr. Celtic. He is like the epitome of what anybody that puts on a Celtics uniform should be trying to be. So Tommy is somebody else that deserves a shout for this. And if you're in the comments and you're like, Tommy should be on there, I kind of agree. But I, I tried to make the parameters for this purely playing. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Tatum definitely has, has a chance. He's still young. Yeah. He's got, you gotta win time. He has plenty of time. He has, he has a lot of work to do, though, because mm -hmm. he's 25. He's made, again, four Eastern Conference Finals, one NBA Finals. He's never missed the playoffs. He's made four All-Star teams now, I think. Maybe, maybe only three? Or maybe three All-NBA. He He's racking up the accolades regardless. Four. He needs to win a championship to edge out probably – one of the four, the, the two remaining spots, whether it's Havlicek or Pierce, if he wins a championship and sticks around forever, he'll likely, again, eclipse Havlicek as their leading scorer. He'll have a championship, so he'll have that very important piece of the career to be respected in Celtics history. Mm -hmm. If he wins more than one, let's say he gets three. If Tatum gets three, he might become one of the cement guys that you cannot take off. Because he is the most talented player since Bird. He has had, again, just a flooded start to his career. 
success all around. He made the conference finals, took LeBron to a game seven as a rookie, and he was the, the head of the snake on that team, really. And yeah, he's continued to be an ascending star since then. Yeah, I agree. I'm excited. I, I mean, he's got to win. <laughs> he got to win. win. They better win. They better win. Is. And I will Put say it shirt. is, uh, as I said, when I was entering my JJ Redick era, Tatum mm. is probably going up against the toughest competition that any, it just, it's true. not, not because these that. guys played bad competition, but because competition is just only ever going to get better from here on out. So that's just the way it works. Um, moving on to the next part of the interview, because there is a lot more and we just spent 15 minutes on that. We won't spend as much time on all of them, but, uh, Tatum was asked about act about asked, excuse me, about Ime Udoka, uh, and him leaving in the, the mm-hmm. ruckus that caused the start of the season. He goes, it was two days before training camp. You lose in the finals and everyone is working their tail off to try to get back to that point. Then you find out that Gallinari tears his ACL. Rob is going to miss the first 25 games. And our head coach is no longer a head coach. It's not easy. It's tough. You play in the finals and you lose and you got to start all the way over. Now we got November games in Detroit. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> You're ready to get back to the finals, but you can't skip these steps. It was a lot, a lot to process and deal with. And I give us credit. We came together. I think it brought us together as a team. We had the second best record in the NBA. Uh, we couldn't, ha- we could have had every excuse to start off slow and make excuses. And I think their season, and I think we've talked about this, kind of went the opposite of way a lot of people expected. A lot of people I was expected literally them, laughing because yeah. I was going to say it. <laughs> they they, they should have gotten off to a slow start and then got hot at the right time. But instead, they got off to a ridiculously hot start and then they got cold at the wrong time. And not saying it's an excuse, but like more thinking about it in that context, like it does make a little bit of sense that they didn't make the same run because the year prior, they were terrible, terrible, terrible. Then they got hot and they ran to the finals this past year. They were great. And then they were not great for a while. And then they still made these crowds finals, but they just didn't have the oomph to get over the hump. So you got to see them put it together again. It wasn't an excuse. You got to see them put it together for an entire season. But I do think now that you're, this is the first time in three years that the Celtics have had continuity from season to season. And I think you could see them take advantage of that. I hope you're right. I do hope you're right. It is funny. Yeah. Like they had the shit hit the fan and then they're like, okay, we're just going to bully everybody. <laughs> they went into Phoenix and won by like 50 and then the wheels came off. Yeah. The, the West coast trip was not kind to of them. And then they really kind of struggled from that point mm-hmm. on. And they never got back to the level. I think everybody felt that they could be at. And it really sucks because we all had a high expectations for the Celtics. They came in and exceeded them. And then they started to let everybody down. Like they didn't just come out flat and it probably would have been less painful had they just been like shit from the start. Cause I would be like, well, e or Gallon, like all the mm-hmm. things that Tatum mentions, people would be like, well, that, well, this, yeah. well, that it's like, well, you got through the hard part. You get robbed back and all of a sudden you can't play. <laughs> like what is, yeah. what is happening? It was weird. I wonder how much of it was, this is so stupid and i don't know if it actually happened I like but i wonder that. how i wonder how much of it was them integrating rob into a lineup that every literally everybody on the floor could shoot threes and then they had to into find a way to integrate rob who can't and i, I don't think that was a reason because like they just got cold at the wrong time like they, well, now they guys just couldn't shoot <clears throat> yeah maybe yeah, rob could he's in the he's in the lab but he's yeah throwing up the the heaves from what Tatum said, though, like we, we talk about it again all the time. Joe Missoula was just putting an impossible spot. <laughs> he was yeah. just putting like the worst possible situation to win. Uh, yeah. Goodman. Goodman got him to talk about it. He says, I think it was unfair in regards to Missoula in the Eastern Conference Finals. I do not know what more Joe could have done. He wasn't out there turning the ball over and missing free throws. That was us. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> this is true. Everyone was like, Eric Spolstra outcoached Joe Missoula. And for the first three games, well, he did. He did. No, he did. The, the co- There was a level of out coaching, But at the same time, like Joe's not taking the shots. Joe's not, like Tatum said, he's not making the free throws. He's not committing the fouls. He's not turning the ball over. Or, or, yeah, that was the coaching part. Mm. But, um, even in the, the broader scope of the entire season, like, Joe was like saying, okay, here you go. Good luck. Like he's just thrown into deep end and, and forced to try get to get ready to learn how to coach buddy is what they exactly. say. <laughs> exactly. No, but obviously like Tatum talked about it all in the grander scheme of things, losing him to It wasn't easy um, getting Joe in, but I, I truly do think like, like I said, it's been three straight years of three different head coaches and the Celtics have gone. They got lost in the first round, but then they went finals, Eastern conference finals with new coach, new coach. Like, there's something to be said about that level of success. You look at the other teams that made the runs those year, 
right? Like the Warriors, Steve Kerr, the Heat, Eric Spolstra, right? This past year, the Nuggets, Mike Malone, right? Like, all, like the teams, most of the teams, Steve if not Kerr, all the, the top, who looked excellent uh, in that Germany game. Everybody was Did trashing see, Steve Kerr on Twitter. We're we're gonna talk about the we'll World Cup later. Do you see the uh, the picture of Eric Spolstra just like giving? Steve yeah, Kerr he's just there? lurking in the background. <laughs> he's like, they really got this guy like learning the alphabet out there, trying to coach. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Um. <clears throat> Jeff Goodman also spoke to Jason Tatum about the Marcus Smart trade. He goes, I am for sure going to miss Marcus, or excuse me, I am for sure going to miss Smart. He was my teammate for six years, and we've been through it all. We had good moments together. We had bad moments together. He's somebody that I wish was going to be my teammate forever. Hmm. Yeah. (laughs) I I would agree with that, Jason. Should have been uh, more vocal (laughs) to the front office. Be like, I'm going to leave if you trade him. (laughs) You could have prevented it. Well. (laughs) But he wants to be the victim. Uh, tough, but um, speaking of where vocal, were you? <laughs> speak- where were you when they <laughs> traded him? Speaking of vocal uh, leadership, all that stuff. Jeff Goodman also spoke to Tatum about this because this has been one of the like most not controversial but talked about points of Tatum's career so far as his. Oh, I love this part. style of leadership. <clears throat> He goes, I'm never going to be Kevin Garnett. As much as people want me to be, that's not who I am. The way I lead, the public may never, may not ever see what I do. When I need to, I make sure my voice is heard and I do it in my own way. I'm not going to be out there jumping up and down, screaming. That's just not my personality, except when it comes to uh, the fouls. But anyways, sorry. Uh, mm. As much as people want to talk about it and want me to be that, I'm not changing who I am. I lead in my own way. When I talk, everybody in that organization is going to listen. Mm. And whatever I say is for the betterment of the team and my teammates know that. Hell like, yeah. Don't trade smart. Back, <laughs> look at that. I didn't even know that was coming. And I was like, they should have, you should have prevented it. No, but for real though, that that's good to hear. I, you no, love to hear that. I, I think the KG part of it is funny. Cause people do complain about that stuff a lot, I including I would like to see him be more emotional every once in a while, because you do get like, I think, I think that is part of the reason why, some people were like, he might not want to stay here. He doesn't really show a lot of like excitement. And yeah. when he first got in the league, he was always wearing a lot of Duke stuff and he would never wear Celtic stuff. Now you see a lot more of like, he's got a Celtics hat on. He had the KG jacket he wore into game seven. And he was like, anything's possible. And then they lost. Um, so I'm, I'm happy he wants to be a leader. The team definitely needs him to step up and be a leader at this point, which he may, he may already be doing. We don't really see. But exactly. with Smart gone, he was somebody that at least the media painted to be the leader of the team, and he's not there anymore. So Tatum, get ready to lead. Yeah, I mean, like you said, I, I've always talked about this in the concept of not everybody's going to be Kobe. Not everybody's going to be these like complete assholes. Like we talk about all the time. You want everybody on the Celtics to hate everybody else or in the league, right? Like that's just the way you enjoy looking at things, right? Like. Kobe wasn't friends with anybody, but now you see Jason Tatum going to hang out with Donovan Mitchell or Jalen Brown going to hang out with other people. You know what I'm saying? Like you'll see these guys hanging out off the court. Like Jason Tatum was working, working out with Joel Embiid, I think, because they have the same trainer. And well, that's yeah, just the way it is. James Harden's being a bitch. So <laughs> just in case Embiid <laughs> wants a trade, you have to be buddy, buddy. Exactly. No, but they're they're going to be friends and everyone's so, you know, don't be friends with these guys that are not on your team. Like that's just the way it is. Yeah. And I think that's just a product of the new era of stars. Like Jason Tatum is saying here, I'm not going to be the guy screaming and, and hating everybody. Like, but I don't think you can sit there and say, well, he's not a leader because he doesn't lead in the way that I want him to like that. That's, I think the part that's unfair. And he addressed it pretty clear here. When I talk, everyone in the organization is going to listen. Okay. You know what? Mm. My bad. All you, Jason, you, you yeah. do your thing. And uh, you know what? He's, he's right. <laughs> He says something. Everybody in that Celtics organization can be like, "Yeah, sure, you know, let's let's try to do that for you." I mean, f- fucking Emil Jefferson's an assistant coach. Uh, do you think that's coincidence? <laughs> no. Oh, Harry Giles is another team. <laughs> yeah, but he found mm. a place in in Brooklyn. But he has the most influence in the Celtics organization since Paul Pierce, and he's gonna act like that. And just because we don't see the way he leads doesn't mean it's not there. And I think he's trying to make that abundantly clear with this, which I enjoyed. Very much listening to. I liked I liked what he had to say about Boston. I'm gonna I'm gonna read that one. You know, skip to just, that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because we're kind of talking about his place within the organization. He he tells Goodman, he goes, just recently I started to feel a connection with Boston. I spent my whole adult life here. My son has grown up here. I've grown up here. I've accomplished so many things. It's happened so fast, and Boston has played such an intricate part in my life. 
I just feel like I relate more, a lot more in these last two years. At first, it was like, I live here, but I'm from St. Louis. I'm a St. Louis kid. Now I'm part of Boston. I really feel a connection with the city and the people of Boston. You never know what can happen, but I love playing for the Celtics. I figured out my space in the city and have grown to really enjoy it. I love the fans. It would be really hard to leave this place. So Tatum, who was painted as a flight risk for the first couple of years, doesn't seem that much anymore. And again, this this kind of like what I just talked about. You could kind of see a change, more of a, a connection to the city develop. So I'm happy to read this. Tatum is a good one, and he's proving it by saying the right thing. He behaves well. Even though he's not a vocal leader, like we kind of just talked about for a couple minutes, he definitely he does everything the right way. Yeah, I agree. I mean, like you said, the first couple of years, everyone was painting him as he's going to leave. And then you remember when he did that ad campaign for NBA and he put on the Kobe jersey? And everyone oh, like, I remember that. Yeah, reamed that was as hell. I thought it was stupid as shit. Not not him putting it on, but all the people getting out of it. But we've been over that. Um, it's nice to hear him talk about wanting to stay. It's nice to hear him sort of adopt the mindset of I am part of Boston now because I think that's how. I mean, in a city like Boston, in, a, in an organization like the Celtics, the athletes are sort of adopted by the city you saw it with marcus smart which is why it was so crushing when he left you saw it with like even go to other sports like tom brady obviously he went to the bucks but he's coming back for week one of this of the uh regular season this year for the nfl look at mookie Betts; he came back to boston for the first yeah. time in like three years and they're like oh look at him he's back well, they and screwed so, him over ex- exactly and everyone hates yeah. the team because I mean, of it. bergeron um, he was a mm-hmm. great great brewing great career just retired so absolutely these guys connect exactly. with the city it's a great place to play if you're listening and you might want to sign a contract here. Just no, it is. Take <laughs> yeah, they Blake Griffin's here. word for it. <laughs> Literally listen to the How About Them Celtics podcast when they're looking to sign a contract. Mm. Um, but the last thing uh, that Tatum talked about, which uh, was in the middle of the article, but we, we jumped over it quick to talk about that. Um, J- he talked about Jalen Brown, obviously signed an extension with the Celtics this summer. He said, I was excited for Jalen and I wasn't surprised. That's a no brainer for me because he deserves it. He had a hell of a year, the best year of his career, and he was rewarded for that. It was the right time. People make a big deal of 300 million. The NBA makes a lot of money. Contracts will be 350, then 370. That's the way it's going. I was happy for him. I knew it was going to happen. It was a no brainer, but I still reached out to him and told him he should be proud of himself and his family. <clears throat> Don't take it for granted. This is generational. I'm 25 and he'll be 27 in two months. We're far from perfect. He won't ever get the credit. We won't ever get the credit we deserve until we actually win a championship. That is the ultimate goal, but you can't right. bypass all the things we've accomplished in the six years. We've been teammates at a very young age. Um, we've been to the playoffs every single year. We've gotten better. Yes, it took some time to figure out how we can be special as we can be uh, and how we can coexist together. And I know everybody says they take turns. I feel like we got to a place where we we're feeding off each other, playing really well. We talk about it all the time. We are due to get over the hump, and it's going to be well worth it when we do. So it's exactly what you want to hear from them. He's right that they won't get the credit they deserve until they win a championship. But realistically, if you look at a, a, across NBA history, all duos, like you will be hard pressed to find many with as much playoff success as these two have had in their first six years together. And the only thing missing is the ultimate goal of a championship, which he admitted here, which I'm not like trying to gloss over, but once they do win a championship, knock on wood, like, I think people would be able to really appreciate like, holy shit, they've been to the conference finals every single year. No, it's it's true. Like, that's kind of what I was talking about when we were like, well, what's it going to take for him to get on the Mount Rushmore? He's off to a tremendous start. And technically, so is Jalen Brown. But again, it goes back to the, is it really his era thing, right? Mm -hmm. But the potential for the the type of career Tatum could have with the Celtics is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. He has bird potential like he has potential to be that much of an icon in the city in the sport for st louis all for the city of boston all of it all they have to do is start winning championships and people are gonna really really start putting tatum tatum high up on all time lists uh the the league's current rankings like we've had to talk about too too much Mm -hmm. (laughs) way way too often you're gonna start to see some crazy shit happen like yeah if they start winning people are gonna be like he went to how many conference finals? He's mm-hmm. he's twenty six, and, and both unfortunately and fortunately for Tatum, it, it's a double edged sword because he is trying to win titles in an era with Giannis, Jokic, Steph still playing, LeBron still playing, KD still playing, and then you have the younger generation of Luca is coming up. You've got all these young guys coming up, and 
if he can't win a title, people will look at it and say, okay, well, he played in this area. It's not going to be an excuse. People are going to be like, damn, he is the new Steve Nash. He's the new Charles Barkley. He's the new Carmelo. Yeah, like, it sucks. But if he does win, he is going to have to go through some of the best talent in NBA history. Like, Jokic and Giannis are top 25, 30 players of all time, and he's trying to beat them right now. Steph's a borderline top 10 player of all time. KD and LeBron Steph's top, top 10. 15, top 10. There's a debate, but like, He's going up against some of the toughest competition in NBA history. And if he can, I mean, he broke through through the finals once. All it's going to take it for him is to get over the top. And people are going to be like, well, shit, Jason Tatum is that guy. And I'm I'm excited. And J- I mean, we talked about this in the context of Jalen Brown. Like, he's got about as good of a co-star as you could possibly have. And I'm very excited about seeing them both in Boston. I mean, we were like um, yeah. five minutes away from Tatum being in the GOAT conversation already. <laughs> Just dude, they shot a bunch of threes, dude. Like, we're back. We're back to me being like, I can't believe they lost that game four. I hope I'm not like 50 and being like, dude, can't believe it. Can't believe they lost game you four. You still will be. Even if Tatum wins five championships, like he could have had six. Dude, he could have had, had six. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, go go check out Jeff Goodman's interview with Jason Tatum. Go read it. Go. Uh, I applied to write the support. messenger. There you go. Well, thank you, Jeff Goodman. As you can tell, I don't get content. <laughs> uh, let's move on. About that. That's for sure. <laughs> Good job. The Celtics made a signing. That's the next thing we're going to be talking about. Uh, Celtics signed Taylor Funk to a Exhibit 10 contract for training camp. Uh, reported by Bobby Manning, friend of the pod, CLNS Media, and uh, Celtics blog writer. Legend. Uh, reported. <clears throat> Absolute legend. He's, I think he's been on our show more than uh, – he might be most. He might. I think he's second behind John Corrales. But anyways, very thank you, Bobby. Too. <clears throat> this is very true. Yes. Uh, Bobby Manning – or not Bobby Manning. Reported Taylor Funk, six foot eight out of Utah State, 25 years old, undrafted this year. Um, but I have his real GM. He is definitely older for a college player, but he is a, a he sure is. Man. He got that COVID year. He got, <laughs> uh, probably a red shirt and he looks like Tyler hero. He does a little bit, uh, 25 years old. Uh, he played in summer league this year for the heat summer league team, which Sam, what's the red flag there? If the heat don't pick. Yeah. Up if the his, heat uh... aren't keeping a guy, probably not a whole lot there. They get every last drop out of the guys they pull off the street. So not great. Taylor Funk isn't getting (laughs) squeezed. Not great. As a senior uh, for Utah State, he played in 34 games, started 33 of them, 30 minutes a night, averaged 13 points, five and a half rebounds, 1.7 assists, shot 45% from the field and 37% from behind the three point line. Um, It doesn't, I mean, he's probably not going to actually turn into anything on the Celtics roster, but you have seen a little over a month ago, or I don't know how long ago now. Uh, and then now the Celtics are starting to sign these training camp contracts to probably keep in their G league system. They signed DJ Stewart to an exhibit 10 training camp deal a little while ago. And now they brought in Taylor funk um, for a training camp deal. Uh, I don't know how much there's to say about it, but just a move we wanted to talk about on the pod Again, probably just going to be one of those going to play for the G League team filler guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how much there is to say about these guys. Maybe you get some really cool preseason highlights and we're like, this guy should make the roster. It, maybe it's going to be the Javante Green Max Struess battle from a couple of years ago. And then they took <laughs> Taco true. and Max Struess went and joined Chicago towards ACL. Yeah, then the Heat found him. And all of a sudden he was real good. Yeah, he he was real good by the end of it. But um now we Taylor got Funk, what, he, he got paid a lot of money. He's he's going to be for a really good Cavs team, though. So uh, good for him. Um, Bobby's tweet about it. Excuse me, just to present a little bit of extra information provided by Bobby on the situation. Uh, 684 Tyler Funk to an exhibit 10. Funk, who is 26, says he, he will Old turn 26. Dude. Excuse me. He turns 26 this year. Uh, Average 13 and 5 on solid splits. Played in summer league for the Heat. Did not shoot very well for the heat in summer league uh bobby explaining the exhibit tens here exhibit tens deals bring players into training camp and typically offer a bonus to remain with the g league team for a certain amount of time the Celtics do have one two-way spot available dj stewart signed earlier this summer to compete for it as well so it sounds like taylor funk and dj stewart will be in part competing for the celtics final two-way spot which to be quite clear don't really care just get speaking just get, of <laughs> exhibit 10 just while we're talking about it yeah you sent this to me mad as hell vincent valerio but oh yeah who the celtics <laughs> let rot at the end of the bench in the summer league has been signed by the lakers so if he's good i want everybody here to know that jack and i know ball and we were like this guy fucking <laughs> rules and they need to play him we did but we were high on him if he sucks then 
you know, what are you gonna then do? you didn't you didn't hear it from us. Then, he then, looked good. He looked good to me. He, he has a, he has a good basketball body, good movements. He looks comfortable, decent shot. I don't know, man. Agree, agree. But for, for these, it's almost weird because for these two way contracts, you almost don't want the Celtics to target JD Davis and type players anymore. You'd probably rather see them go after the J Scrubs and guys like DJ Stewart and uh, Taylor Funk who aren't going to be these stars in the league. They're not going to turn into these, you know, <clears throat> big players. Like they're probably not going to be a, a big, you know, rotation piece, but they could turn into a Sam Hauser. They could turn into a, you know, Caleb Martin or Max Struess. They could turn into one of these guys that is just a solid role player in the NBA. Um, and, and you're going to see why the heat and the Grizzlies and all these other teams target, role players for their two-way contracts because you see a lot of teams around the league say oh let's go after some high upside 19 year olds and bring them in and see if they turn into something at some point you've got to just go after guys who will turn into role players and i feel like that's what you could see with the guys the celtics are targeting for theirs um so it's just about what route they decide to target perhaps uh, anyways <clears throat> Uh, let's see. I don't think we have too much else Celtics stuff to talk about. The Tatum article took a bunch of our time, but uh, NBA 2K24 just dropped, Sam. I know. I don't know if you're going to play it. Uh, I know we used to play back in the day, but I haven't played in a minute. Um, but with the release of NBA 2K24, Celtics ratings have dropped. We talked about it briefly uh, when some of them came out. We know Tatum is a 95 because 2K teased the game and released all of their top ratings. Um so we know that, but the rest of the Celtics roster ratings are also out, and we're going to talk about them here. Tatum is a 95. Jalen Brown is an 89. Kristaps Porzingis is an 86. And those are the top three guys, which makes sense. And then pass that, the rest of the Celtics core, quote-unquote, Brogdon, 83, then Horford, Derek White, and Robert Williams all sitting at an 82. So find ratings there. I mean, I get why 2K puts Brogdon above Horford, Derek White, and Robert Williams, even though I might not agree with it. And it's because, ooh, shiny, he won an award. Let's put him up. Like, that's probably what 2K is thinking because 2K is 2K and they don't really watch I basketball. I like you, you're upset. You're well, like this nonsense. Should Brogdon be ahead of Horford, White, and Rob? I think maybe. Really? But I, I think Derek White should probably be higher. And, and we'll probably see a shift once the season gets underway because you're going to have a bigger role. You're going to see more opportunity for him to flourish and people will catch on to it. The Celtics are going to be plastered all over national media because they're supposed to be contenders. You're going to hear people talk about White and 2K is going to have to juice him a bit. Probably. That that was less a shot at Brogdon and more a shot at 2K doesn't watch basketball because – they don't. They... Mm. <laughs> I was watching uh, King of the Fourth Quarter. He put out his first video, and in the guy. sim, in the sim, his team was playing the Kings in the playoffs, and it was like two years into the future. The Kings rolled out a end of game lineup of De'Aaron Fox, Isaiah Jackson, Mitchell Robinson, Demontis Sabonis, and another center. It was De'Aaron Fox and four centers on the court. Uh, so 2K, very good at basketball video games. Uh, anyways, the other thing that I wanted to take another shot at 2K for is. The Celtics starting seven, their top seven guys have solid ratings, right? You got Tatum 95, JP 89, Porzingis 86, and then Brogdon 83, Horford D. White Rob at 82. The next best player on the roster is Fima Kylo at 74, which again shows me that they Googled Fima Kylo, saw he averaged 19 points or whatever for the Hornets in 19 games, and said, oh yeah, he's probably pretty good. And they saw, oh, Pritchard didn't play a lot, he's bad. Hauser didn't play a lot, he's bad. Banton, like they just like, you know, we'll throw all these guys together. It's just, I just, I just, I just like it. I just like how they just chuck the rest of the people on the roster at the same rating. Fuck it. Call the day. Well, they yeah. got to earn their respect. It's like Dylan Brooks. Dylan Brooks runs 2K. He wore 24 for the Grizzlies, 2K24. It's him, Maybe. not Kobe. Maybe Dylan Brooks it. on the cover. That'd be kind of fun. Him, him in the boxing gloves. Oh, God. the boxing I would gloves. put Dylan Brooks on the cover of the game. He's an icon. Uh, so I think, hope, I mean, yeah. I, I almost think 2K should like really lower the ratings across the board because mm -hmm. I think it would make for a more fun like GM mode. Because if you play, especially in the modern, like now, now you can start in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2012, like you start everywhere pretty much, which is awesome. Can't wait. But if you start in today's era, then like 95% of the league develops into being like an 80. And yeah. then the cap gets screwy. Like, it's all a mess. People have to, like, go the and game's broken. The, the sliders and the game's cap so sliders and all of yeah, this. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, whatever. What I've found to be the most fun, definitely the retro stuff. And I put, like, a, a creative player in there just in my career that way. That way I don't have to spend money. There you go. 
<laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, TK, I don't know how much I'm going to talk 73. Yeah. 73. Jared Not White put out an article of how he could maybe improve. He watched a bunch of tape on him. And this is an interesting take. He compared him to one Kemba Walker, now a member of Monaco overseas. Very yeah. lovely place to live. He's winning, <laughs> still winning. He watched the Pritchard tape. And the conclusion Weiss made about Pritchard is that he looks fine for most of the possession. He can control the tempo of the offense decently, and he's ready to pull up from deep whenever a big drops on his screens. But he gets in trouble as the clock winds down later in the play. At this point of the three-point revolution, teams can take away the standard point guard shot off the dribble. Kemba Walker could make it work because he was so incredibly fast and athletic. Plus, he's an elite mid-range shooter. Pritchard has t- tried to develop some of Walker's approach, but is still coming up short in a few key areas. So in order for Pritchard to really be impactful, and this is something we have talked about at length, whether it's with the Celtics, if he was to be traded somewhere, where is he going to fit? He probably needs to become a more versatile scorer, oddly enough. And in an age where it's just threes and layups, for Pritchard to be effective, he has to have the defense afraid he's going to knock down mid-range shots too. And that would be interesting if he was cut loose a bit this year, at times, maybe garbage time, maybe when players are out, and he actually gets an opportunity to cook and he's able to do it, he could be such a major piece for the Celtics as they strive to win a title. Yeah, I just we talked about this when we like put this in the, the show sheet. I don't know how often Peyton Pritchard is going to have the opportunity to implement these, these all, all changes. The yeah, and Sam mocked me. I just I didn't mock you. I was like, you're right. Sarcasm, sarcasm. Yeah. Um, Pritchard's a spot up three point shooter in this offense. He's not going to get the chance. The reason he got the chance to show off his skills his rookie year is because the Celtics didn't have a backup point card. They didn't like it was they Marcus Smart and then Carson Edwards, right? And Carson Edwards was bad, and so Pritchard got minutes. Um, but now with Malcolm Brogdon and Derek White in the rotation, there's just not going to be many minutes for him. And they, they could go to him a little bit more this year now that Marcus Smart's gone, and you could see maybe more, you know, Derek White playing the two, Pritchard playing the one. But at that point, if Brogdon or Derek White's on the court, they're going to have the ball as the point guard, not Peyton Pritchard. That's just how it's going to be. Like, you're not going to see many lineups where Peyton Pritchard has the ball. And even when Peyton Pritchard was a backup point guard, he got the ball because Jason Tatum wasn't as good of a playmaker then. Jason Tatum's a great playmaker now. He's, he's like, he has the ball in his hand a lot more. And so you know, I, don't, I just don't think you're going to see Peyton Pritchard with these opportunities as much. And he can implement them when he does have the ball in the final seconds off the catch. But if the if a possession ends with 10 seconds or five seconds on the shot clock and Peyton Pritchard has the ball, something went wrong that possession, right? Like that's a bad possession if he has the ball and he's not in an immediate spot up catch and shoot position uh, or cutting off the ball. So I think if he were to implement these changes which uh, that's not discounting jared's article i think the stuff he's noticing is correct like that's how he can improve i just don't know how often he's gonna get the chance to do that on a team like the celtics he probably needs to be in you know houston or or orlando or one of these teams that doesn't have as much pressure or much depth as the point guard position right you should throw him to san antonio let him back up trey jones and let him do whatever he wants with them Yama. but with Derek white and brogdon and jason tatum the ball handler like there, there's not going to be i feel like a lot of time for peyton pritchard to get the ball in his hands yeah, the opportunity is definitely not here. But it sucks because there we we can go through it again if we really want to be like there's nowhere for Pritchard to play. There's not a lot. No. Yeah. There's too many good point guards now. It sucks because he's actually a quality player. You just you know got upset because he's a 73 and 2K. And I think you're kind of right. But at the same time, like there's just a bunch of great point guards. Do you know what would probably be the perfect home for Pritchard now? That it, it would never happen just because of the, the teams involved. Miami. Kyle Lowry's old. Gabe Vincent's gone. Think about yeah. it. Yep. <laughs> okay. could probably That's start fair. for that Miami team, right? Like he probably, he wouldn't have the ball in his hands a ton, but he could have it as much as Gabe Vincent did. I don't know. <laughs> and he, he wanted it up there just because there's no actual trade that would be made unless, would you do Peyton Pritchard for Richard Jefferson or Josh Richardson? Would I do that? Yeah. Yeah. Pope Catholic. <laughs> I love Josh Richardson. That's one of my favorite like role player Celtics in of the last Dang. decade. There you go. Maybe maybe call up Pat Riley, see if he's interested. Anyways, uh, that's all we got, I believe, for Celtic stuff. K- kind of. I mean, we'll turn it blue. We'll talk about uh, NBA section, basketball section, but we will stay with the Celtics because Daniel Tice just ended <laughs> the Team USA's reign 
at the FIBA World Cup. Sam, I know you're hyped about it. I know you you were an anti Team USA guy, uh, and Daniel Tice and Germany did take down Team USA in the semifinals of the tournament. Tice teamed up with two former Celtics in Dennis Schroeder and Mo Wagner, as well as Franz Wagner, to lead Germany to a 113 111 win. And I know, Sam, you're as an anti USA guy, you were ecstatic in the tournament when it happened. <laughs> yeah. Hate USA. Hate it. Clip it. I truly get more excited to see Daniel Tice light up the national team than actually having the national team do well. Just because he used to play in the Celtics for a couple years. It's just more fun mm-hmm. to me. He's the best. He was a quality player when he was on the Celtics. He, he tried. That's what my dad said yesterday when I was telling him, like, Tice lit up <laughs> Team USA. He was like, yeah, I like Tice. He always tried. I was like, yeah, well, you got that right. He did try. He did so try. seeing him get to do well on a big stage where – his place in the NBA seems to be a bit up in the air. I mean, he's getting paid almost $10 million to play for the Pacers. But besides that, he's not like – I mean, when he was on the Celtics, he wasn't getting consistent minutes. And he was injured last year. So I'm glad to see he's playing well on a big stage against Team USA, who had the Defensive Player of the Year playing for him. This is true. He cooked Jaron Jackson Jr. Daniel Tice against Team USA in the semifinals put up – 21 points, seven rebounds, two assists, and a block shot. 10 of 15 from the field, one of two from three. He cooked them. Uh, great performances in. Dennis Schroeder also played well. Former Celtic, Mo Wagner, former Celtic, played well off the bench. Team USA just was cooked. They couldn't do anything. They were slow. Didn't play well. And uh, they don't have any really good <laughs> centers, apparently. They couldn't rebound the ball. Sharon Jackson Jr. averaged, I think, the least rebounds of anybody who got regular minutes for Team USA. <clears throat> and uh, people weren't too happy about it. <laughs> people were not happy with Team USA's you know, rotation management of their big men. Cause Walker Kessler was there sitting on the bench and he uh, did not play. <laughs> he did not play. Well, he did get like him. clowned by Thanasis that one time. So I actually backed Steve Kerr in his decision <laughs> not to play him because he just, he got beaten the post and got dunked on by Thanasis. So you, sure. you can't have that. You gotta be better. Sure. <laughs> Fair enough. Speaking of Steve Kerr, uh, the Warriors are reportedly going to start Chris Paul. Um, this was from Vincent Goodwill, I believe of Yahoo sports, uh, who reported this, uh, Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Uh, I think he spoke with Mark Spears or he aggregated or something. This was Mark Spears talking about Chris Paul in golden state. I do expect him to start. And I think it's in like five minute spurts. I don't know that they really want his minutes to be high, but I think they're going to try it. I could be wrong, but that's the gist I'm getting. This isn't an opinion that he's expected to start. It's what I'm hearing. He's never not started in his career. So it does sound like they're going to test out the Chris Paul lineup. They are wary of the fact that it might not work, but it does sound like the, the plan is to start Chris Paul in uh, golden state, which could be weird. Who goes to the bench at that point? Who doesn't start? Do you, you bench Kevon Looney and then run Draymond at the five? Cause I, do you not play Andrew Wiggins? Like, I just don't know how that's going to work. No, that's a good question. Good luck to him. Celtics have their pick. That's, <laughs> that's all I really care about. I think the Warriors are going to be kind of a mess. I don't think Chris Paul is a good fit. I think he, he plays best when he has the ball. The Warriors are a more fluid offensive team. Kind of like what we talked about the other day when we were like, I was like, oh, uh, oh, wait, no, that video hasn't come out yet. Uh, <laughs> You'll see a video on it. You'll see a video on it. But I think I think the Warriors aren't going to benefit from having Chris Paul. It was just like a salary dump trade where they're going to lose that $30 million slot after next season. Mm-hmm. So good luck to them. I don't know what they do. If I had to guess, Looney does go to the bench, but then they're really, really small. I think it makes the most sense for Draymond to come off the bench. But then, I mean, how effective is Draymond going to be as a bench player? I don't know. I mean, you could bench Wiggins and just have Wiggins come up, come in for Chris Paul like a couple minutes in, and run Chris Paul, Steph, Clay, Draymond, Looney. Like that'd probably be fine. It's just, it's just weird. I, I don't know. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, next thing is from Dave McMenamin of ESPN reporting that Anthony Davis still doesn't really want to play center. Um, he said that. Uh, Davis has, quote unquote, made it clear behind the scenes that he prefers to play more of the four during the five during the 23-24 regular season. The all-star big men played almost entirely at the center last year and for much of 21-22. Well, to that, I say, Anthony Davis, you played a lot of center last year and you made the Eastern Conference Finals. What the fuck? <laughs> play center. Yeah. Get over it. Um, but it's it's said that they're probably going to start Rui over Christian Wood at the same time. So I don't know if they're going to run Rui at the, the three and then or Dave Darvin Ham's just going to be like, sorry, AD, play the center. Get over it, buddy. Um, that's what I would do because Anthony Davis is just so much 
clearly better at the center, but it just sounds like he doesn't want to put that strain on his body, which also makes sense like from a team perspective and a him perspective because he is injury prone. He, he, he is just not as strong as he once was. He gets injured very easily. So running him at the four could save him a little bit uh, in terms of, you know, missed games. But I don't know. It's just just play the center. What like why? <laughs> what are we doing? Anthony Davis has not wanted to play center like since he joined the Lakers. Always. And it never, never ceases to make me laugh because he's giant. <laughs> and also everybody was raving about how great Anthony Davis was playing defense in the playoffs, deservedly so, until they met the Nuggets in the conference finals. So the take here has to be, did Jokic break Anthony Davis and the Lakers? Like the Lakers saw Maybe. Jokic post 26, 14 and a half and 11 and a half against Davis while Davis was defending him shooting like 50 and 47 splits. And they're like, all right, dude, like, yeah, we'll slide you to the four. <laughs> Just shut up. Like you can get your wish. You can't handle that guy that can't even move. So yeah, cool. Lakers, they're going to bend over backwards for this guy. Sure. Great. Maybe, maybe it's because he doesn't think playing power forward will be as difficult on his body as it will be to play center and have to really work more down low. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know if you guys could hear it through my mic, but uh, I just had some thunder outside that I could literally feel through the floor <laughs> mm. on my feet. Uh, it is it is not fun outside right now. But the last NBA thing we do have to talk about here uh, is we're going to go through it quickly. We're just going to have quick reactions to him. Bleacher Report, Zach Buckley of Bleacher Report, I believe. Sorry, Greg Schwartz of Bleacher Report. They, they mentioned to one person to me sometimes. Greg Schwartz of Bleacher Report came out with 10 NBA trade predictions for the upcoming season. We're just going to react and say yes or no. Do we agree with them? If we okay. want to give a little bit of thoughts, we can, but this can be a speed run. Uh, first one, Dame is traded before the start of the regular season. I rate that a duh on the scale of duh to no way. <laughs> I think no I think, way. You don't think he gets traded before the start of the regular season? What's going to change between now and the regular season starting that's going to make any he, team I make think any he, team take a step forward in making their offer? I think the Heat raised their offer because they want to get him in for training camp. And so I think over the next couple of weeks, you'll see Dame get traded to the Heat because they're like, okay, we don't want to get him in here halfway through the season. We saw what happens when you don't have everybody on the court for an extended period of time last season when they struggled in the regular season. So I say, okay, let's let's throw in an extra swap. We'll throw in Jovic and Jaime Hawkins. We'll throw in that tiny bit extra that we've been holding out and get the deal over the hump. And I think it gets done. But anyways. Maybe. I mean, that deal still sucks. Like, I still I, think if I'm that. Portland, I'm not doing it. I, I'm well, holding out. They're not going to get anything else, I think. And so I think they, they I don't think any other team will want to make a trade for Damian Lillard. You just said who else is going to, you know what I'm saying? So I think they'll get done. Uh, he predicts James Harden will stay on the 76ers and the issue will drag into the regular season. I agree. I, think I it agree does. too. I think uh, Daryl Morey has shown in the past that he's going to play hardball. James Harden mm -hmm. really doesn't have a leg to stand on. And if I'm Morey, I'm telling him to go to hell. So there's no way they're going to just bend over backwards to trade James Harden. There's no value in trading James Harden. So he's going to be with the Sixers when the season starts. I'm more interested to see if he shows up or not. I think that's going to be the intriguing start of this. Maybe. Uh, part of this. Um, new CBA trade rules will lead to a ton of deadline deals for apron teams. Maybe, but I think you already saw like the Suns said, I don't care about the apron. The Celtics did the grant move. But other than that, they were like, okay, we'll still pay Jalen. We'll still do this. Like, we'll, we'll figure it out moving forward. I don't know. I, I think you could see a bit more salary cap moves. I don't know if you'll see a ton of contending teams trying to cut salary, though. I think it'll just be a lot of – I think you I think you'll see an active trade deadline. <clears throat> really? You think I don't think this teams necessarily means contending teams. You're going to see teams that are like, oh, shit, we're not as good as we thought we were, be more willing to <laughs> okay. be like a board. Because we don't want to pay Hawks. the money. It's not worth like us going. Yeah, like the Hawks or even like kind of the Lakers last year where the Lakers were really trying to be competitive and they had to reshape their whole roster. A team mm -hmm. like that where they're not guaranteed, even Miami, like Miami last season, had this all been in place, might have like been like Lowry, see ya. They might have offloaded Maybe. more players just to, to, to dump money. There was rumors of that anyway. Now with the new CBA, having everyone buy the balls, no, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah. All right. Sure. Uh, next, Raptors keep their core together. Yes, but they shouldn't. I think it will happen, but I think they shouldn't. I'll put it that way. I don't really know what to think here. I agree with you. I think they're dumb and they're going to keep them together. There's absolutely no reason that the object with the Raptors going forward. There's no benefit to either side. Of course, we've talked about this at length in the past where it's like Siakam is 
come come to North America from Cameroon. Like he only knows Toronto and that's what he knows. So he doesn't want to leave. But at the same time, they're not going to be competitive. They don't have the assets to be competitive. Why would they not just try and rebuild and get better assets? Yeah, I agree. But I said the same thing last year, and then they traded a first round pick for Yaka Pertle at the deadline. So I don't know what they're doing anymore. <laughs> it just, they don't make sense yeah. to me. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, next one DeMar DeRozan gets traded to a title contender. I would say yes, but I think the Bulls are going to do the same thing the Raptors do. And I think the Bulls will just accept mediocrity, and I don't think they'll trade him. But I don't know. What type Maybe. of contender can, can afford to accept uh, that back in the deal, though? The Lakers, the Grizzlies. What do you say? Sorry, you're you're a little bit robot when you start sentences. <laughs> Excellent. Um, um, I think the Lakers potentially sorry. could. I think the Grizzlies potentially could. I think the Kings maybe could. Like, I, I don't think there are any like the Bucks, Celtics, Nuggets. Like, none of them could, and I don't think they would. But like, the fringe contending teams could maybe say, okay, maybe we can get to Rose, and maybe we make some noise. Maybe the Knicks make some noise. Maybe the Cavs make some noise. Maybe the 76ers finally say, okay, whatever, Harden, see you later, get the Bulls to give up whatever. I don't know. Like, I, I think there are some fringe contenders who could say, okay, let's just get to Marta Rosen and see how far we can push this. <clears throat> so, I don't know. I suppose. I, I, I don't think Chicago will anyways. Uh, the Suns are forced to sell low on DeAndre Ayton. I feel like he'll just be there. I just don't. I think they'll just stick it out again with him. <clears throat> I don't know. They, they've essentially locked up so much money. What are you going yeah. to get back for DeAndre Ayton that's worth – getting rid of a, a center that's a serviceable starter, right? Like, that's the thing. If you trade DeAndre Ayton away, I think you're going to get back like a bunch of fragmented pieces. I don't think you're going to get yeah. like, oh, now you have this guy instead. Like, that's not how it's going to go. Maybe, I agree. The only argument to that is – actually. I doubt it. I feel like the Pacers are going to be in on Miles Turner at this point. I, I think the only argument to splitting it up is that you have smaller contracts to work with in trades from then point out. But at that point, I just think Ayton's more valuable. Uh, Pacers are the surprise buyers of the deadline. Speaking of Miles Turner, I don't hate this. I feel like you have Buddy Heald's contract. You have Daniel Tice and McConnell's contract. You have some first round picks and some young guys are an abundance of them at the wing. Why not? Why not put some stuff together and, and buy a piece that could help you, you know, compete for the playoffs moving forward with Halliburton at the helm. I think it, it makes sense. I don't hate it. I think it makes sense too. It, it just really depends on how well they play. I don't really know okay. what, no, they have those contracts, like you say. So there's nothing really stopping them. Yeah, they've got the contracts. Uh, next one, Rockets shop Dylan Brooks. <laughs> I I mean, I don't think they should assign him in the first place for that contract. I don't know who would want to take on that contract. This is a weird one to me. I don't know. I'm with you because I don't really think you're signing Dylan Brooks for that money if you're the Rockets unless you want him because that's not a very tradable contract especially considering that the new CBA makes people not want to have contracts. They don't want a player like yeah. Dylan Brooks for what? 20 million a season, 24 million. Yeah. How much is yep. he getting annually? I think it's 20. I think it's um a little above 20. I think it's like 21 or something. It's, it's okay. around there. It is. Uh, one but nobody wants to pay that. Oh, it's yeah. It's 22, 22, 21, 20. So it's like a little bit descending, but it's effectively around the 20 bill range. <clears throat> so not great. <laughs> not great um what i forgot to put this on here this isn't anything he just predicted the teams that will be selling uh swartz said the hornets wizards and blazers will have a fire sale yeah sure they're gonna be bad so of course they're gonna have a fire sale um but then the last one is the mavs will go all in for a third star again you've seen them try to trade for a center all summer long effectively they have these contracts and tim hardaway jr and Rachon holmes and maxi cleaver they have the contracts to throw together if they really wanted to push for a star star you have josh green and Jaden hardy you have a first round pick in the future why not like you have no reason not to see i I don't know if all in is the best way for the Mavs to go. The Mavs went all in last year. They had Luca. They had Reggie Bullock. They had Dorian Philly, Finney Smith. They still had Reggie Bullock after that, but they had Dorian Finney Smith and they traded for Kyrie. Mm -hmm. They fall from fourth in the West down to 10th because they really don't have any depth. The big man spot was tough for them. They've made a lot of moves this summer to make their supporting cast much better. That's why I think they could go all in for a third star. Because I do think they have the depth to support the move now. Because I don't think Tim Hardaway Jr. plays a huge role from that anyways. Well, and that's all a in is, is, is giving up your depth. Like, that's what I read that is. 
Well, no, I, I don't necessarily think so. I think it means trading your picks and trading your future. And like I said, they have the depth now to support an all in move because realistically, all it takes to get up to a 30 plus million dollar contract is Tim Hardaway Jr., um, Reggie, or not Reggie Bullock, excuse me, Richon Holmes and a random minimum deal. And that gets you around 30 mil. And then you still have Kyrie Luca and the star you trade for. You still have Maxi Kleber. You still have the rookies. You still have Grant Williams. You still have Josh Green. Like you still have a decent supporting cast around it. So I, I wouldn't be surprised for them to do it just because it feels like they've been aggressive this summer and trying to trade for center anyways. I do also see the argument of though that they shouldn't. Right. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I, I don't know. I, in that case. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it. It depends on how the season Has Kyrie goes. had the best teammates ever. <laughs> uh like like at the end of the day, when when he retires, like let's say 20 years from now, it'll be like Kyrie played with LeBron, he played he played with Tatum, he played with KD, KD he played with Luca, and then KD might else have, he's I gonna think play with. KD might have had the best teammates ever. Russ and Harden, Russ then he sucks, played with <laughs> Russ and Harden in OKC. You t- with- you're gonna tell me that Kyrie playing with LeBron, Jason Tatum. KD in Luca is is as good as Russ. I mean, is worse than Russ and Steph and Harden and Kyrie and Devin Booker and Bradley Beal. If you had let me finish my argument, still not even close. Okay, good to know. Let's move on to the rat list so I can rat list Sam and his internet because holy it's shit, terrible dude! It's ruined the whole week of recording. <laughs> even when he comes back, I can't get my argument in because he just interrupts me. It's well, I'm just so brutal, fired up, man. dude. I'm like mad holy as hell. They wound shit. me up and they just let me go. You're mad this, as hell. <laughs> this, this internet is terrible, dude. Oh I don't know God. what it is. This whole week it's been bad. The whole session of recordings, the the Thursday recordings, the last pod, this one, I had my hot spot. The thing's terrible. I, I I would like to apologize to Jack. I'd like to apologize to me. This is terrible. Linksys should owe. Just, they should sponsor our right show. Now. Verizon should give me so much in compensation, like more than like the guy that goes to court in a neck brace in a lawsuit. Like I should be able to own Verizon. It might That's be time how bad to buy your own internet. It might be time just to buy your own. I don't internet. think it's gonna help. Cause I'm on the top. Are would. you are you on like the first floor? Or are you on the top floor at your house? Yeah, but you can still get stuff wired. Like that's I, you can still get stuff wired upstairs. Like yeah. I have an Ethernet cable now, and it's. I mean, I you, remember I used to lag, and now I don't anymore because I just bought my own and it fixed yeah. the problem. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's what fixes for me. But yeah, rat, rattless internet. The internet's been tough today, and it doesn't help that it's gross out. Like the the weather probably isn't helping shit. But dude, it it's is, sunny here. I guess it's sunny there. It's it's. <laughs> disgusting here it was just thundering all throughout the pod it's raining i have to go Dude, i can't wait bit. i hope it i hope it actually i don't want it to come here because i have men's league tomorrow mm. but i i like the rain pro nah, rain not, out on it out on thunder especially because it's it's the equivalent of fireworks to the dogs hate it hate it they're running around everywhere they're they're all pissed they're upset <clears throat> not fun but uh yeah internet first on the rat list today what do you got hmm we also skipped Reddit post of the day, but I figured I didn't think we had. I it. kind of forgot about the Reddit post. That's Take fine. A breather. We'll, we'll skip it this episode. Oh, we also, sorry, RJ, we will check in with you on our next pod. We've been scrambled today. So I haven't yeah. even checked the email today. We will check in with you. We have some emails waiting later for day. us. <clears throat> okay. We'll check in uh, on the next pod we record. What else on the Ratless though? Ratless my brain. Ratless. I haven't been thinking straight lately. <laughs> Ratless, the woman at the coffee shop today. <laughs> Mm-hmm. She she was ahead of me and my girlfriend, and she must have been like at the cashier for five to ten minutes. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. that, she she definitely was like getting a catered order, like like mm-hmm. she was like bringing food somewhere. But my goodness, did it take her long to get see to get on with the day? You always mock me for using the online ordering thing, right? For Duncan, right? You mock me. Yes. I am ordering for like four people, so I have a. a giant order so if i order it on the app i am in the drive through bang 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 instead of taking 20 years so not only is it easier for me but it also i'm not there for a million years holding up people in the line so i i think that would save well, there's no app for this place too. well then she's her own problem she can stay on the rat list. correct i'm just saying that's another reasoning for my, my a lot of stand around to go out they also didn't put a tomato on my sandwich which i didn't like <laughs> did it come with tomato and they just forgot to put it on i asked for a tomato <clears throat> Oh, you, yeah, get, you get ham and cheese, put a tomato on there. Fire. Hmm. Interesting. Odd choice. Um, I don't really know. Rat list uh, golf this week. Not because I had to play, but because I had two times. I had, I had golf canceled on me twice. Yeah. This week. Both What's going on? Poisoning. It's getting canceled. Food poisoning. Both the people I was supposed to play with oh. just got sick because they ate something bad. You're up next. Before. 
<clears throat> yeah, right. Knock on wood, man. I just haven't been able to play, but uh, I, I did get to play once. I played yesterday early morning. I played like shit. Henry played really good. And the guy we played with was cool in the sense that he was uh, he is like the Uber driver. He doesn't say anything. He just lets you enjoy go around a uh, drive in silence. He just we didn't talk much. And we just kind of we played and we were good. It was very nice. But uh, Rattlers can't golf getting canceled twice this week. I was upset. Rattlers, my my ride to Providence yesterday. Mm. Let me tell you. I leave my house. I stop at the store. I, I head towards 95. I get close to 95. I'm like, wow. There's a lot of traffic. So I check my GPS. It must have been bumper to bumper, like crazy, oh crazy traffic. So I had to take the back roads. I hit every light. I had pedestrians. And then I finally get to my destination and I realized I forgot my running shoes, which made me furious because Disaster. I need my running so shoes. Even though I ran drive, my shoes in, I was fine. You drive to, uh, to a certain place to run you don't just run no. from your house and... i was going to i was going to my girlfriend's but i we had like a party and something last night so i stayed oh you just and... wear your running shoes okay i understand well no i bring them so when i go running oh, the next day you stayed over and okay. i start you yes, gotcha. stayed gotcha, gotcha and uh i didn't have them so i had to play in my street basketball shoes or, or run in my basketball shoes which is fine yeah i guess i i pound the pavement with them but i was so mad i was there and like that that was like day ruining I was like, <laughs> I really forgot my running shoes. Ruined my day. Well, it's because everything already pent up. You're already annoyed at the traffic. You're already annoyed at all the stuff. You're yeah. like, on top of it, <clears throat> no running shoes. What a disaster. Um, what else? Uh, I caught McDonald's chicken nuggets the other day, hmm. and I found a bone in the chicken nugget. I bit bone in. It was wings like, from McDonald's. New item. I McWings. know. Yeah, I, uh, I pulled like a little, it was just tiny little. It wasn't even like a skinny bone. It was like a chunk of something. And I didn't really want to eat my nuggets anymore after that. I kind of threw like five of them away. I'm like, you're going to get right, the done. McCrispies. The chicken sandwich from McDonald's is actually quality. I've heard they're good. Quality chicken sandwich. I probably told you. Yeah, I've heard um, I like tell everybody that. Like behind Chick-fil-A, that's my number two. My my second favorite chicken sandwich, like fast food places. Yeah, I like Popeye's. McDonald's. I enjoy Don't Popeyes care for Popeye's. Well. I think it's overrated. I think Popeye's good. KFC's is tragic. KFC's is really bad. I yeah, think. I couldn't tell you the last time I had KFC. I had KFC Gross. driving back from Ball last week because i hadn't eaten yet that day. that's why you told me that <clears throat> i did i did fumble the bag though i just i ordered the tenders instead of the popcorn chicken which is an l but it is what oh. it is. is there ball this week i forgot to ask you is it tomorrow there is <clears throat> i assume yes. i should be back right. in time i should be back in time i'll ask henry too but i don't know what i'm coming back okay, um you tell i'm trying me. to think of rat list like this is not a rat list <laughs> but i i mentioned that i went to that party last night with somebody's birthday and so my girlfriend is <laughs> rat list school, birthdays so... no no no, no. Well, i'm yes, not gonna rat list continue. anything from this don't need uh, it to come off the wrong way because I did. Yeah. I had a good time, but it's funny. It was all med students at this party. And let me tell you, med sure. students are built different. Mm -hmm. They 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 have very, very short learning units. So I feel like things you would learn in a semester, they learn in a couple weeks and then they have to have an exam on it. So they were all stressed as hell about this exam last week. And I'm talking to them about it. I'm like, so, you know, how's everyone like in the new unit? <laughs> and they're like, oh, we were so stressed. Like, we all thought they failed. And then the one kid's like, yeah. One, it's pass fail. He's like, yeah, it's pass fail. So they're always like cramming, studying as they should be. You know, if I go to the hospital, I want to make sure I'm safe. But they're all like really working hard for a pass fail exam. And then the average grade was an 85. Oh, and they're all stressed. The they're the they're worst. all stressed, dude. They, these kids put themselves through so much. Yeah, and then I love when I go there because I'm like the only one that's not like super smart, at least that way. So they're all like talking about med stuff, and I'm just like, yeah, dude, ball, ball, going hoop. That's me. That's what I do. That's what I do often with all my friends. They're all talking about like, oh yeah, you know, I'm in sales. I'm in this. I'm like, guys, I've got no fucking clue what's going on. I, <laughs> I heard about that. sales. I, I, oof. I mean, I, me it's started. not exactly the same. I was a nursing major for like a year and a half, and like. You need, I will say, you do need at least a micro program. An 80 was passing. Like, it wasn't like you pass if you get a 60. Like, you had to get an 80 to pass. So, that's probably what pass fail is for them. So, 85 isn't like super ridiculous. Like, it's still good grade, but you need an 80 to pass in a lot of cases. And, um, yeah, dude, any sort of school and medical field is fucked. I dropped out after a year and a half. By the time <clears throat> the, the problem was, I dropped out like midway through the semester, like my sophomore, my first semester of sophomore year, but I dropped out like just a few days too late. So I had to continue the classes. Right. And so I had to finish out the classes knowing I wasn't continuing in that major. 
and switch mint i could have stopped going to clinicals and still been fine but i didn't want to like leave them hanging like with a person less so i just i kept going like whatever i i stuck it out but the funny part was we got to the end of the semester and we were taking the final and this other kid uh also dropped out similar time as me and so me and him just speed ran the final and so all these people are like stressing at the final and we just like we raced each other to see who could finish the final first we I like, that. In, like 20 minutes and we just finished, filled it all the uh did you finish first <laughs> uh it was very close i think he might have beat mm. me by a second because i was just slower but uh i think i got like a 62 in the final and then bounced and we uh we called it a day and uh, that was the end for jack in nursing school <clears throat> was not a fan for me that was uh i wasn't i wasn't built like that as they say <clears throat> not a not a fan me but neither. that's all i got for us you got anything else no no i'm done man i don't... we'll call it pleasant week. <laughs> we'll call it Except for the watch thank y'all for tuning in to how about them Celtics. We appreciate you for listening and watching subscribe to how about them Celtics. Sorry, RJ, we didn't go over the emails today and sorry. We didn't do Sam's Reddit post. My head's been scrambled today. I've been all over the place, um, but we'll be back with that. Our normally scheduled programming next podcast. We also had the Jason Tatum interview, which chunked up like 30 minutes of the show. So which is good. Big, big stuff for us. Yeah. We had content finally, <laughs> uh, but thank you for tuning in. Check us out on Spotify and Apple and playback TV. I think we have three subscribers on there. Go subscribe oh, there. So you can watch games with us. Uh, go hang out and uh, leave us a comment on YouTube. That's my favorite part of my day. Sam, get us out. Hey, yes. Thank you very much for listening and watching. If you're watching or on the YouTube, whether it's ours or CLNS's or CLNS's other. Make sure you subscribe. If you're on ours, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our daily uploads. We've been putting them out every single day this summer. So keep yourself entertained. But yeah, you can find us on playback, like Jack said. So follow us there. You can find us on Spotify and Apple. You can follow us, leave a five star review there. If you only want the audio versions of the pods, they are there. You can find the socials at How About Them Seas. That's Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. The Facebook page is just the name of the podcast. You can find Jack at Jack Simone NBA. You can find me at Sam LaFrance NBA on Twitter. That's it for us. Bye. Check, check, go.